this year I went with the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M4 Max chip that has a 16 core CPU and a 40 core GPU so this should be more than enough for all my programming and editing tasks. When it comes to the storage I only went with 1TB SSD because I have all my video on external SSDs and 1TB is more than enough for all my software that I need installed on the laptop itself. Also I went with 48GB of RAM. I didn't want to go too overkill but I know I need a lot of RAM for my editing work. And lastly of course I had to go with the OG silver colorway to match my headphones and my phone. This year Apple came out swinging especially with the base model MacBook Pro now having 16 gigs of RAM for the same cost as previous year's base models with only 8 gigs of RAM. So I think that even the base model is looking juicy this year. But yeah Apple has made some big claims of a 24 hour battery and other performance claims which we definitely have to put into a test soon with the day in the life video. So if you want to see how the laptop does in real day to day life with programming and content creation then subscribe so you don't miss that video. Let's quickly go over the onboarding flow when you get your laptop. For the most part it's pretty simple and you're asked to connect to a Wi-Fi, sign in with your Apple ID and create a new user for the laptop. Then because I was signed in with the same Apple ID as on my phone, I just kept all these settings the same as they are on my iPhone. If you don't want to share your location etc then you can turn those tracking features off here. Now for the most part my laptop is always hooked to my monitor but I like to use the touch ID whenever I'm in a public cafe or a plane so I went ahead and set that up as well. And lastly I brought my Apple wallet and cards from my phone to my laptop for any quick payments I want to do on my laptop. My teammates were telling me that new Apple products have a good smell and I didn't believe them. They were right, I don't know if Tim Cook is out here spraying fragrance into those boxes or what's going on. And by the way let's just take a second to appreciate this sunset. The winter is coming so the days are getting shorter and shorter here in Finland. I mean it's only 5 pm and it's pretty much pitch black already. But at least the sunsets are looking nice. Anyways let's get to the business now. First things first I like to make a few changes to the laptop settings themselves. I like to keep the dock quite small and organized so all this bullshit needs to go. And of course I turned the dock hiding on. Also something that's a must for me is the ability to just tap the mouse and not having to click it all the way down. Then in the keyboard settings I turned the key repeat rate and delay until repeat all the way to the max. And lastly this wallpaper needs to go as well. There's quite a lot of nice ones on the Mac by default and I decided to rock this blue one for now. Now before we can really install anything else we need to get the browser situation figured out. For most of my life I've just stuck with Chrome because I didn't find any reason to switch until I got introduced to Arc. In my opinion it has the cleanest UI I've ever seen on any browsers. It's also Chromium based so you get your familiar dev tools for inspecting the HTML, reading the console and checking out any requests. Same as Chrome. I know they had the security incident a few weeks back and the team fixed it within a day which was nice to see. But still that left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. So although Arc does support Chrome extensions I still use Chrome for all my crypto related stuff. I just don't want to take any chances when it comes to security on that front. But I mean at the end of the day your browser is just personal preference and different browsers focus on different pain points and Arc has become the one for me lately as my main browser. Then of course we need to install Brew as the package manager for the Mac. Homebrew basically takes care of all the tedious stuff when it comes to installing and uninstalling packages and you can get everything sorted out with just a couple of commands and after a couple of minutes you're ready to go. Except just remember to copy paste these last three commands to add it to your path. After installing Brew we can now start setting up the dev environment. First thing we need to do is install a new terminal. For the longest time I was a default terminal maxi and for whatever reason I just didn't want to switch. But I kept seeing warp on my youtube page all the time and after a while I was like let's see what this thing is about. The team calls it the intelligent terminal and to install it you can just use Brew for that. Warp has many features that are missing from the default terminal which are super nice like autocomplete and even just being able to jump to a certain character using your mouse or painting all words and deleting them at once. Like just this basic stuff that should come with any terminal and it's definitely gonna increase your productivity. They also have a lot of different themes for you to choose from and of course we need to drop that opacity a little and add some blur. They have also rolled out the AI features which can help with programming and stuff but I have never used those. Next up let's set up git and ssh keys are the way to go of course. You can generate a key pair for yourself by using the ssh keygen command. 
then give it a password and if you do it correctly you should have these two files in your .ssh directory now. One of them is the private key which as the name suggests you should keep private and the other one is the public key which we're gonna give to github. So read the content in the .pub file and just copy the whole thing. Then log into your github account and in the settings add a new ssh key and pass the public key there. After that to test the connection just clone one of your repos use the ssh option and you're ready to go. Now, of course, as a programmer, I need a code editor. And me being in the TypeScript world so heavily, I've been using WebStorm, which is an IDE specifically built for JavaScript slash TypeScript and web development in general. It used to be behind paywall, but JetBrains recently made it free for non-commercial use to help developers with their learning and hobby projects without us having to pay anything, which is honestly super dope. And immediately when I saw this, I was like, I have to try this out. I've heard so many good things about WebStorm and JetBrains IDEs in general. The benefit of WebStorm being built specifically for the JavaScript and TypeScript ecosystem is that it can offer many features straight out of the box that other IDEs just wouldn't be able to do. For example, you get this really good context-aware AI-powered code completion, and at least for me, having AI as part of my workflow just feels second nature nowadays. Also, these quick fixes save so much time. So, say for example you forgot to add a prop in React, or you made a typo, then WebStorm will suggest these fixes to you automatically. And all you have to do is just hover over the error and hit the tooltip and you're good to go. On top of these you get refactoring tools, great project navigation and auto import straight out of the box without you having to install anything, because again, this is the kind of stuff that WebStorm is specifically built for. So if you're into web development, then definitely try out WebStorm to make the experience as smooth as possible. The last thing you want to deal with when you're just starting out coding is trying to figure out all the plugins, etc. you need for actually getting into coding. But yeah, WebStorm is my code editor of choice and a big shout out to JetBrains for lowering the barrier to entry to coding and also sponsoring the video. Make sure to check out WebStorm with my link in the description. Next, if you ever worked on multiple different Node projects at the same time, you know how annoying it is to upgrade and downgrade your Node.js version when changing projects. For this, my teammates introduced me to NVM, aka the Node version manager, which lets you install multiple Node versions and easily switch between them based on the project. To install it, you can just use brew and then in your projects just add this .nvmrc file in the root directory. Now when you want to use the Node version that the project is using, you can just run nvm install. Then, of course, because we're cool, we use microservices and for that, Docker is a must-have. On Mac, you have to run the Docker desktop application whenever using Docker, but after that's done and the app is running, you're good to go. One problem I had with my old laptop was that it only had 16 gigs of RAM, so running my work projects locally in containers with a browser and a code editor open at the same time made everything run super slow. So with this new laptop, I'm really hoping that it can handle all the containers. And since I work on a lot of web apps, of course I need to test out APIs here and there. For this, I use Insomnia, which is a Postman alternative that I like for sending out requests to different endpoints. And with Insomnia, you can easily add headers and parameters to your requests, which is a must-have. Then a productivity app I use a lot is Raycast and it has a bunch of features. One of my favorites is the shortcut feature which allows me to create custom shortcuts for accessing my repos and started code. So I can literally just type my project name here and it's automatically going to open my project in a code editor and I'm ready to go. Also the clipboard history helps a lot when you need to copy and paste multiple different things at once and is a lifesaver. And lastly you get this really good window manager with Raycast. So Raycast is definitely a must-have for all devs. Let's quickly go over some other cool apps I use as well. So for communicating with my teammates, we use Slack. Then I use Notion as my note-taking app. Archiflow as kind of my all-in-one productivity app and Miro for visualizing my projects. Also, I just found out about this cool app called Dropover. With Dropover, I can select many different files from different directories. Then when I shake my cursor, I can drop all the files into this one box here. And from here, I can drag and drop all the files to wherever I need to. Then to check myself before any meetings, I use this app called Hand Mirror. And with this, I can just make sure that my curls are looking good before I hop into any calls. And lastly, let's install my editing software, which I use for all of my videos. And for that, I use DaVinci Resolve. I think it's the best for color grading and things of this nature. And that's how I set up my MacBook from scratch. Let me know if I'm missing some apps here. And of course, if you like the video, then subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.